Hi, John here, and welcome to another Savvy Nuggets video. If you don't know what Savvy Nuggets are, then check out some of the links in the video description area, because if you're here to learn about engineering, then Savvy Nuggets will definitely interest you. In this video, we're going to take a look at flanges. I'll explain why we have flanges, what the different parts of a flange are, we'll look at the different types of flanges, the different faces, and the different surfaces. So let's start with the basics. What is a flange and why do we have them? Why are they essential components in every piping system? Well, here is a part of a piping system. You can see that over here, we've got a hanger. This is a piping hanger. It supports this insulated pipe here. You can see the bracket going over it. And then we have our main pipe, which is this item where my mouse is, and that runs along here. We can see some other piping supports as well. And you can see that we've got a flange shown in the middle of the screen now. If we look around the piping system, you'll see that there are other flanges as well. We can zoom in on a few. This ball valve is joined to the piping system via flanges. Here is the one flange, and here is the other. But if you look over here, we've got a smaller flange. And if we change our view a little bit, you can see that there are other components within the piping system that also require flanges. Flanges allow us to install components within the piping system. These components might be valves, they might be steam traps, they might be strainers, or anything else that we need to connect to the piping system in order to make it work as we desire. We can also use flanges for connecting machines and pressure vessels and other items to the piping system. A flange is a type of mechanical seal. What we're attempting to do is connect a pipe, such as this one on the right, to the component without there being any leakage between the pipe and the component. So the process fluid that's flowing through the system will pass from the pipe on the right through the component, then to the pipe on the left without there being any leakage through the flange joint. Now flanges are the second most popular type of joint that's available. The other popular type of joint is this one over here, you can see the weld lines. Welded joints are the most popular type of joint. Flanged joints, which are a type of mechanical joint, are the second most popular type of joint after welding. But what is a flange? Let's pull up another 3D model and I can show you. We're now looking at a flange, but this particular flange is not connected to a piping system. Let me do a little spin here so you can take a look at it. It's similar in design to the ones we saw a moment ago. You can see that we've got some nuts, and these nuts are placed at intervals around the blade of the flange. The blade is the area of the flange where the studs or the bolts pass through. Let me just take a cross section, and you can see now that the blade, which is highlighted by the orange area now, is the area where the studs or the bolts pass through. Where the washers press against the blade, marked in orange now, that is called the bolting plane. So we've got our flange blade through which pass our studs or bolts. We've got the nuts that press against the flange blade and where they press against the blade, we have our bolting plane. Aside from the flange blade, we have the flange hub. The hub is indicated in orange and the hub is the area of the flange that accommodates the pipe or the pipe end to be specific. The pipe end is just the end of the pipe, but the pipe end may be different depending upon the type of flange you're looking at. The pipe end may be prepared for a butt weld, for example, or it may have a screw thread. It depends upon what that particular pipe end is connecting to. Between the two flanges, we have a gasket. In our example, we've got the yellow gasket, and this yellow gasket sits between the two sealing faces of the flange. And we're going to squeeze that yellow gasket in order to get the material to flow into the gaps, the imperfections that are present 
on our flange ceiling face. You can see on the model that both flanges have teeth-like geometry on each ceiling face. This teeth-like geometry is referred to as serrations. It is a serrated surface. Much like when you have a saw, it has a serrated blade or a serrated edge. If we were to press the two flanges together, this yellow material in the middle, the gasket, would deform and it would flow into the troughs or the dips in the serrations. And that's what gives us our seal. This gasket has not been crushed by the two ceiling faces yet and we can see that because the gasket hasn't flowed into the dark areas between each of the serrations. If we remove the cross section for a moment and let's just explode the flange out into its different parts and now we can have a look at the components that are typically used to make a mechanical joint. We've got our nuts and our studs we might also use bolts as well. We've got our plain washers. Washers are used to make sure that our nuts don't dig into the surface of the flange blade. And they're also used for insulating purposes as well. We've then got our flange, which consists of a hub and a blade. We've got a gasket. Gaskets might be hard, soft, or composite. You can also refer to them as metallic, non-metallic, and semi-metallic, respectively. This one looks like a soft type of gasket. And then at the other end, we've got another set of washers. When we assemble our mechanical joint, it's going to look like this. If we want to crush the gasket and obtain our seal, we can tighten up the nuts that are at either end of this stud, and we'll gradually crush the gasket between the two flange sealing faces. What's important here is the bolt tightening procedure or the bolt torquing procedure. We don't want to randomly tighten up the nuts. We'll cross tighten them and we'll do it gradually in order that we squeeze the gasket evenly and obtain a good seal. If you were to take, for example, the top nut and you were to tighten that up as much as possible and you did it on the opposite side as well, what you'd end up with, especially if you tightened up all three at the same time, is a flange that was skew. If the flange was skew, you wouldn't get a good seal because the top would be pressed really tightly together. And even when you went down to the bottom of the flange and started tightening up the lower three nuts and on the opposite side, you still wouldn't obtain a good seal. So you have to follow the correct bolting procedure in order to get a good seal. If you want to learn more about piping flanges, then check out our piping flange course. It's about four hours long. You also get a 50 page piping flange handbook, which you can download as a PDF. There's an associated quiz. And if you finish the course on savory.com, then you'll also get a certificate. The piping flange course is part of a piping series course that we're producing. And the piping series course looks at pipes, flanges, valves, and other interesting items related to piping systems. If you want to learn more about engineering and you enjoyed this video, then head over to savory.com and there you'll find over 25 hours of engineering video tutorials and courses. There are also handbooks, quizzes, podcasts, and over 100,000 words in our technical encyclopedia. We cover a wide range of topics from valves to engines to motors to transformers, so be sure to check those out. Don't forget to subscribe or share the video on social media and I hope to see you on another video or a video course very soon. Thank you very much for your time.